Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. Now probably we're going to take this video and split it into three, four, maybe five parts. We'll see how much we need. Um, and it's about building a high performance region receiver. The idea is that it's a video specially made for beginners like me with limited knowledge in designing circuits. And the idea is to take a very, very simple circuit uh, that works pretty well. And we're going to try to improve it as much as possible uh, with little modifications, maybe using different bits and pieces of uh, schematics that we find online, uh, trying to mix them together and end up with a better circuit. And the story is the same uh, for the Sputnik region receiver. I started the YouTube channel with the region receiver and I'm going to end it with another one. I'm just kidding, I'm not going anywhere. I, anyway, I, I studied the, the Sputnik region receiver um, based on a very simple region receiver schematic that I built during my childhood. And with my limited knowledge at that time, when I studied the YouTube channel, I tried to design a circuit, uh, or a region receiver circuit that works well. It's pretty stable in frequency and it's very easy to build by beginners. So far, I think I succeeded. Um, it's pretty sensitive, works well. I'm really happy about it. And of course, uh, it's very, very close to my heart because it brings me into the amateur radio hobby. And that is how I, end up, uh, how I ended up getting my uh, amateur radio license. Um, the disadvantage is that um, I know it's not as sensitive as uh, the region receivers built with FETs are probably not as stable as a FET region receiver, which is uh, powered by a lower voltage. Um, also, the disadvantage is that if you try to make it multiband, for example, I wanted to build a region receiver, a Sputnik region receiver, that it's, uh, it can cover all the amateur radio bands, starting from 160 meters down to uh, 10 meters. But as uh, soon as I go lower than 20 meters uh, towards um, 10 meters, the receiver needs modifications in order to make it to work. So I quit the idea of making a multiband Sputin region receiver and I only built so far the 80 meters, 40 meters and 20 meters band. And they were, all work well. Also, my friend Hendrik in Germany sent me the Charles Kitchen design. When I, I also have a video on this one on the channel. Um, I had to take it out of the uh, enclosure in order to show it to you. But um, the problem that uh, I didn't like about Charles Kitchen Designs is that uh, it needs a big coil, uh, which is probably a good thing because using big coils with thick wire, thick wire is less sensitive to temperature changes than thin wire. So this probably improves the frequency stability. But then it needs a big variable capacitor for the tuning, uh, and in the smaller variable capacitor for the region control. And if you don't use uh, diode tuning for the uh, fine tuning, then you need a third variable capacitor for fine tuning, which makes it pretty expensive to build at some point, especially today when variable, good quality variable capacitors are hard to find and the ones that you find um, are very expensive. I'm not uh, taking here in uh, calculating uh, the cost using those uh, cheap plastic uh, variable capacitors. So uh, the idea is very simple. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to start to with uh, this schematic. We're going to try to get rid of the big coil and replace it with the toroid coil. Then we're going to replace the region control with a potentiometer and all the tuning is going to be made with diode tuning. So we completely get rid of the variable capacitors. And then um, we're just going to add a, an audio amplifier stage at the end. Probably we're going to do it with transistors just for a change to get rid of the LM386 audio amplifier. And then once we're done, we're going to uh, build a nice uh, PCB board for this receiver and uh, update the article that I already have written on the blog about the Charles Kitchen design. And uh, this way uh, people can also uh, build a very simple region receiver and we'll see how much we can cover with what uh, we have available. But then we're going to continue to improve this one and we're going to take this very simple schematic and try to improve it even more. Maybe play around with the buffer stage on the input, uh, maybe make it more sensitive. 
uh, then probably we're going to try to add a filter, an audio filter um, after the region stage. Um, the idea is to have a good uh, CW filter uh, that it can improve the audio output of the receiver. And then again, probably we're going to use the same um, audio amplifier stage based on transistors and we'll end up with a nice uh, sensitive and uh, stable in frequency uh, region receiver that it's easy to build. And the idea is to again use as little components as possible. Uh, and of course, if it's possible at the end to also make it multiband so we can cover as much as possible uh, starting from the 160 meters band down to the 10 meters band because we're con mainly concentrating on the amateur radio bands, not so much on the uh, general coverage AM broadcast band. Uh, those receivers are easier to build, so we're going to concentrate on, uh, on the amateur radio bands. So if, if it's possible to also make it multiband, that is even better. So anyway, at the end, of course, we're going to end up with a nice PCB design that you can all order and build a nice region receiver that you had, don't have to uh, have a lot of uh, headaches with, uh, which you know that it works from the beginning. And uh, maybe you can start your journey into amateur radio. Let's not forget that I returned to the hobby and I ended up getting my amateur radio license thanks to the Sputnik region receiver. And I also started this uh, YouTube channel also because of this receiver. So I'm very thankful and that is why uh, the Sputnik Reader receiver is very close to my heart. But anyway, let's get here on the table, start building this and then we'll end up with a better uh, PCB board design and a better region receiver. And also I have to say thank you to my friends at PCB Way, where you can also order your PCB boards, by the way, uh, for sponsoring this video and for helping me to make videos for you. If you want to build beautiful homebrew projects, choose PCB Way. With excellent PCB prototyping services, all you have to do is to open your account on PCB Way, use the software of your choice to design your PCB board, upload the Gerber files and place your order. Soon you will receive your professional and great quality PCB boards for your projects. PCB Way also offers PCB assembly services, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and even more. PCB Way is the way. So the idea with the new receiver is going to be based same on the, the, the things that I used for the Sputnik. Uh, one thing was that I wanted all the controls installed on the front side straight on the PCB board uh, just so we avoid um, uh, running wires from the potentiometers which are installed on the front panel to the PCB board and then you know sometimes they break, uh, you, you don't have a good contact or something and then the region part doesn't work or the uh, tuning control and you wonder what's wrong and you think that the schematic is wrong or your, the way you build the receiver and then uh, later on after you waste a lot of time uh, trying to figure out what's the problem you realize that one of the wires is broken. So I wanted to avoid that and I build it this way, as compact as possible. So uh, the most important uh, thing in the, this region receiver, it will be the RF coil. So we get rid of the big chunky RF coil made out of PVC pipe and uh, thick wire, and we're going to replace it with this small T50-2 toroid. Now very important for my beginner friends, keep in mind, you cannot use any random toroid that you find in all sorts of different colors. Uh, because it will not be uh, the same as this one as not all the toroids have the same properties and you might end up having a different inductance or some of the toroids might not even work on, on the frequencies that uh, this receiver requires. So it's very important that you have a red toroid with a, back, with a gray back uh, which is a T50-2 toroid. So we have four windings. Uh, first one is the main one. Uh, from the region uh, side and this one has 18 turns then the antenna signal comes through the buffer stage and it comes through this coil this one has 10 turns the RF signal received uh, through the buffer stage will be picked up by the main RF coil then we have the thicker coil the one we're going to use for the uh, regeneration of the um, region stage this one has 7 turns and then we have the fourth winding, uh, this one has two turns and we're going to use this one for the, as the pickup coil for the frequency counter. Now depending on the frequency counter and the sensitivity that it has, 
Um, this one might be anything between one up to two, three turns maybe, um, and it should be enough. Now that we got uh, uh, this uh, out of the way, I have to talk a little bit about where I'm getting my wire from. A lot of people ask me uh, where do I uh, get my wire for the coils. Usually I recover it from old transformers which my friends might get rid of. I collect all of them and when I need wire I just take apart the transformer and I use the secondary, uh, the wire from the secondary uh, for the RF coils. Uh, most of the time the wire can vary between 0.3 up to 0.45 millimeters depending on the power of the transformer but usually somewhere around 0 0.3 0 0.35 maybe 0 0.4 millimeters um, before we carry on actually there is one more coil to be winded uh, just in case you don't have an RF choke um, um, that uh, you already purchased and it was already made we need an RF choke that is probably uh, 2.5 or 3.3 millihenries. Uh, I have this one that I made uh, with some random uh, ferrite uh, toroid. I'm not sure exactly what type it is, if it's 43 or other material. But I had to mine 44 turns and uh, I have an inductance of 2.5 millihenries. So it's perfect for the RF choke. Okay, so I finished building the receiver, um, it didn't work of course, uh, right from the beginning, I stayed up last night trying to do some tests and um, I figured that uh, it doesn't want to work, so I woke up this morning and started working on it again. Um, basically, it's uh, just as it was in the original schematic, I just made a couple of uh, changes and we're going to talk about each change in, um, in just a little bit. Uh, the first thing that I didn't build was the diode tuning just because I wanted to concentrate first on the um, modification about the region control and get rid of that variable capacitor replacing it with a potentiometer. So for this reason um, for tuning right now I'm using a cheap uh, variable capacitor. Very annoying, very hard to tune when you're trying to cover a wide range of uh, frequencies because it doesn't have a multiplier. So um, going back to the uh, circuit, uh, once I turned it on, it didn't want to go in oscillation, it didn't want to work, there was no feedback uh, from the region control, nothing. So um, I started to do measurements of the voltages. Um, if you look at the original schematic, there are a couple of voltages that you should measure and check to make sure everything works fine. And everything was okay except the uh, point where I'm supposed to have uh, something between 1.5 up to 2 volts. Uh, my voltage was under 1 volt and uh, I figured that uh, maybe that's the reason it doesn't oscillate properly. So what I did, I replaced the 2.7 kilo ohms resistor with 10 kilo ohms and I got closer because my voltage uh, raised up uh, probably I think it was something around 1.2 or 1.3 volts something like that and of course I could see already that uh, the region control started working but not properly so because I didn't want to go higher in value with the resistor I decided to play around with the 470 picofarads capacitor that is connected between the potentiometer and the feedback coil so uh, First of all, I didn't know how it will work, so what I did, I uh, dropped the value down to 60 picofarads and uh, yeah, nothing worked, so I figured that uh, probably um, I should go a little bit higher in uh, capacity, so I increased the value from uh, 470 picofarads up to 680. We might play around with that value later on at some point uh, once we finish building everything in order to get a smooth regeneration control. The potentiometer that I'm using it's 1 kilo ohms at, so, at this point. I tried 5 kilo ohms but it seemed a little too much. So um, for now I'm going to stick around with 1 kilo ohms. It seems to be very smooth and uh, I like it. So. Um, I guess uh, that's it for this part, uh, we're going to continue with uh, uh, the, the receiver uh, tomorrow or maybe the day after tomorrow and we're going to build the diode tuning.
because first of all we have to figure out what's the maximum capacity that we can get with that and uh, this way we can uh, discover the frequencies that we can cover using the diode tuning and the coil that we have available so um, after we finish building the the main tuning and the fine tuning using diode tuning we might have to modify the main winding of the coil in order to cover the frequencies that we desire for me for example i would like to cover something between uh, the 80 meters band so something from 3.5 megahertz and uh, if it's possible to go a little bit over the 40 meters band so over 7 megahertz that would be great and uh, this way I can cover at least uh, three um, amateur radio bands, um, 80 meters, 60 meters and 40 meters and also broadcast bands in between. And uh, I would be happy if it works that way. Um, after that, in the third video, we're going to continue with the audio amplifier and uh, probably we're going to play around with a little bit of audio filtering to get it to sound better for CW and SSB. And uh, yeah, we'll carry on from that after, um, after we finish um, testing everything. For now, all I can say is that it can cover uh, with the coil that we just uh, described earlier, uh, something between 10 megahertz all the way up to 20 megahertz. So it's not bad. Um, at the end of the video right now, I'm going to uh, play around a little bit so you get to hear the way it sounds as it is of course really bad to control it with this uh, variable capacitor but at least you get to have an idea about the way it sounds i'm still not happy about uh, cw and ssb signals uh, but that's very hard to tune with this uh, capacitor as well and also i may have to make uh, adjustments to the region control in order to make it better but for now that's it and uh, i'll let you listen to the receiver for a little bit and uh, I'll see you in the next video so we can continue. We'll see if we can manage to improve it or destroy it. <laughs> but hopefully to improve this receiver and uh, learn a little bit on the way. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in a day or two. Until then, 73 and have a magical rest of the week. Design 